Stewart. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Timmy the Time Bomb Roast. You county guys gotta get louder because we finally got rid of this fucker. Come on, man, make some noise. There we go. About time, dude. Timmy the Time Bomb is gone, thank God. Thank God, man. Usually when people retire, like, they're the happy ones. Not this time, man. We're, we're like, thank you for leaving. You made everything better. Everybody's happier. Area 52 is safer. Everything is better, man. It's awesome. Uh, been here 30 years, man. Well, 29 with us and 30 total, right? That's cool. That's cool. That's a lot of material. We got. That's a lot of material. We got a lot to cover. Um, let's see here. Like, we want to destroy you tonight. Just so you know. I know that's what you want. How you have any self-esteem left right now, like after a career with us, is beyond me. But we're, uh, we want to own you. We, wanna, we really want to destroy you. Um, you. You have such a great track record of making good decisions over your career that I know retirement's going to go very well. I'm sure he spent minutes and minutes planning for retirement. Uh, I think he used Gary Sargent for financial advisor, and, and uh, we're, uh, I'm sure you'll be good, man. I'm sure you'll be good. Don't worry, Gary, you're not the only one. We're laughing it off, that's how you handle that shit. Way to go, Gary. We got a beautiful crowd for you tonight. A lot of people came out for you, man. A lot of good-looking people. And Bruce Green. Where's he? He's here, too. Bruce Green, not the best looking guy. How he? Aww. Never mind. <laughs> oh, there's no oh, and You're not allowed to do that. There's rules in a roast. You can't do that. We gotta, we gotta have a good time here tonight. All right. Uh, let's see. I noticed. Uh, I was looking on your Facebook, and you went to Bimmy already, right? Where you're setting up a fire department over there. You're running that project. You're in charge of that project. <laughs> I'm sure that'll go well too. Um, but it's cool that it's really cool that you know you're traveling already. You're you're trying different foods, Timmy. When we asked you to imitate Anthony Bourdain, that is not what we meant. All right, we're thinking more current, more current events. Uh, he hung himself. That's what we're going for here. <laughs> I'm not even roasting you yet. I'm at the end, bro. I'm just hosting the show, getting everybody warmed up. Um, I got to tell you, uh, when you retired, when we heard you were going to retire, that was the best news we had heard about you since we heard that you were going to die after you fell out of the tree stand. Remember that? Remember that? Like, they came out there like, oh, he's, he's going to die. He's fucked up, man. And we're like, wow, fingers crossed. All right. You know? <laughs> so he's going to be going early. That's cool. Um, it was great. He actually, if you don't know, I mean, most of you do, it sounds like, but he, he fell out of a tree stand hunting. Um, he was messed up, man. He was an ICU. Uh, they took out, what, your spleen, your gallbladder, both testicles and an ovary. <laughs> he was messed up, man. Messed up. You, uh, you got a lot of people here tonight to support you, um, if you want to call it that. I mean, they're here to see you get your ass kicked verbally, <laughs> but, but a lot of people showing up for your retirement. This is by far the most we've had for any retirement, so that's fantastic. Uh, but there was one guy that I know really wanted to be here. He really cared about you, and he's not here, and you wanted to see him, and that's Jimmy the Fish. Does anybody know Jimmy the Fish? <laughs> he wanted to be here so bad, and we wanted to get him here. We actually, we found him. It was, it was hard to find because you don't know where he's at. He's homeless. He's this homeless guy that's nasty, he fakes seizures to get out of bar tabs. Uh, Timmy, Timmy calls him a mentor. Um, <laughs> just nasty, nasty guy. Maria Rivera. Exactly. I mean, just a dirty, nasty guy. And, uh, and we're like, do you want to come? He's like, fuck no, Timmy smells worse than I do. Um, so we're like, he goes, I, I can't be there, really. I have an obligation, which if you're homeless, there's no such thing, but whatever, we went with it. And we're like, hey man, you know, you got anything you want to tell us about Timmy? And apparently in the, in the mid-90s, this is before Roz and stuff, he went through a really dark time. Because like, according to Jimmy, he came up and he offered, he offered Jimmy the Fish, the homeless guy, $20 for a blowjob. <laughs> and Jimmy was, was so happy to tell us about it because he's, he's like, Timmy was great, man. He gave me the 20 bucks and then he got on his knees and just started going to town. <laughs> I mean, 
He's like, man, he was really good at it too, man. He was like, oh, playing with balls. I mean, he was, it was like he had a lot of experience. Like he'd been doing it for a long, long time. It was kind of... Jimmy, um, Jimmy did say, though, if you could call him, that'd be great. It's been a while. Um, I don't know how a homeless guy has a phone. We asked. He's like, yeah, I got a cell phone. Trevor, this guy Trevor got it for me. <laughs> so, you may be paying for that too, Timmy. <laughs> we didn't leave nothing out, man. There was a lot of stuff. Um, over the years, Timmy's had a lot of nicknames. Um, what, Time Bomb, obviously, Soup Bone, uh, Asshole Dickhead, and Motherfucker are some that come to mind. I don't understand soup bone. I mean, the rest makes sense, but soup bone, I don't even know where that comes from. Because I guess it means like you're really skinny, but you're not anymore. Like you're, you're starting to get the boobs and everything. That's awesome. <laughs> so, I don't get it, man. Um, I do want to congratulate you, though. Um, you pulled off something that nobody in Osceola County fire history has ever pulled off. Um, you actually made a crew happy about getting Jay Jackson. <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to it. I, I thought that was great, man. Good sport, Jay. Jay's an asshole, if you don't know. Everybody hates Jay, like, almost as much as Timmy. So, yeah. Um... Back in 1992, uh, some of you guys saw this already. Uh, in high school, let me back up. In high school, nobody signed Timmy's yearbook. Uh, he wasn't very popular, as you can imagine. So he came up with a yearbook for the fire department. <laughs> He's like, I'm sure somebody will sign mine. I don't know. I don't think anyone did. Uh, this is his. There's no signatures. Um, but he, uh, we're, we're like, how can you fuck up a yearbook? Timmy found a way. <laughs> Leave it to Timmy to find a way. Um, if you guys didn't see this, it's spelled Asiloa. <laughs> really, Timmy? <laughs> How do you misspell what's on your t-shirt at work, man? <laughs> it's right there, your pay stub. How? Oh. Oh. Um, and the misspelling was like, that was only the second biggest complaint from the guys that bought it. Uh, the first biggest complaint was there's pictures of Timmy in the yearbook. <laughs> They remind us what a fuck-up he is. Um, <laughs> I can remember the first time I worked with you, dude. I don't know if you remember this. This was in uh, Intercession City, Rescue 31. Remember them days? Uh, it was me, you, and Mikey Reed. You remember that day? No, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good day. We had a lot of fun, run a bunch of calls, all this stuff. Uh, and then it's about 10, 11 o'clock at night, and this is before you. He, uh, we're laying in bed, going to sleep, and I hear from Timmy, Hey, Mikey. You still good with the, doing good with the ladies? Yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact. Hey man, um, you mind if I hang out with you? <laughs> it's like, yeah, why? Man, chicks just don't dig me. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> I felt so bad for Timmy, man. I'm over there sad. Like, how did you make this sad, you know? Sad like, like when Kilmer got his job back, like that kind of sad. <laughs> He's not here, is he? <laughs> like, thank God. I was sad, man. Like, like I was about to cry, and then I realized I'm a grown ass man. Grown ass men don't do that. You know, it's not like I'm Timmy giving his last radio transmission. So, I mean, he's a pussy. Um, the uh, he's actually got his formal retirement through the county tomorrow night. Um, we uh, the union normally presents a, a golden axe. And we talked to the union, we're like, hey man, I don't know, you know, he's, he's kind of clumsy. <laughs> May not be smart to give him an axe or something. We wanted something that you get used to, or get some use out of. So, um, took a lot of work, but we got you a golden guillotine. That's what we're hoping. <laughs> like, we're hoping you get at least one use of that. <laughs> that would be great, man. We're, fingers crossed. <laughs> we're going to do it ourselves if the tree stand can't. Um, <laughs> Brooks was here, Timmy, that's all I can say. Um, in the late 90s, a, a TV show came out on Comedy Central called South Park. You guys heard of that? Yeah. And, and 
not long into the show, they introduce this character who's like retarded, fucked up hair, fucked up teeth, just like, like a disaster in a wheelchair. Coincidentally, they name him Timmy. I, I'm hoping it's a coincidence, I don't know. And uh, they, uh, every time I'd see him, remember we worked at the hospital together? Yeah. And every time I walked by him, I'm like, bah, 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 Timmy! Like, that, like these guys were, turn on Timmy. <laughs> and he'd just look at me, Timmy Neidert would look at me like I'm fucked up. Like I'm not right in the head, you know? Hmm. Okay. But as like I kept doing it over the months, and, and more and more people caught onto it culturally, and they started laughing and laughing. And he's like, "What is this, man?" And finally, asked somebody, and he just comes up and kicks me in the balls. He's like, "You're an asshole, man." <laughs> uh, all the true stories, even Jimmy the Fish. Um, <laughs> Timmy, Timmy's good at, at handling things. He's good at, at running things. Um, a few years ago, we had a, an Explorer program, and uh, this guy, Rafael Carrada, he, he headed it up, he got it going, and it was going great, and then he got deployed overseas, he's a military guy, he got obligated, okay, and Timmy, the good-hearted guy that he is, he stepped up and said, you know what, I'll, I'll take it over, I'll help you out, and uh, we're all real proud of Timmy, because Timmy's never stepped up for nothing in his life, you know, <laughs> and so Timmy did what Timmy does, and he ran that program right into the ground, straight down, very 9-11-y, just gone, done. All these poor teenagers, dude, you are responsible for more false hope and disappointment in teenage boys than Joe Long's ex-wife. <laughs> On that note, your first roaster. Very good friend of mine, he's a ginger assassin. Give it up for Mr. Matt Escobar. When you watch him on stage, you can tell he loves it. He's really got just a pep in his step as he's doing his thing. Bouncing all over the place, I love it. You know, if this whole comedy that doesn't work out for you, Matt, you can maybe get a job as a spokesperson for male pattern baldness. <laughs> Timmy, hey, but first of all, Peggy Moorefield called. She wants that shirt back after this is over. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'll let you guys know, man. I'm. Uh, this is not really my thing. I'm kind of nervous to be up here. I was talking with Matt earlier. He told me before I get here on stage, I should just kind of look around the crowd and picture everyone naked. And this was working out really well until I found Ratso. Just fuck it all up. <laughs> fuck it all up. Thank you, Ratso. You're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, 30 years, Timmy. 30 years. 30 if I've been kind to you, bro. Not being kind. You are walking that fine line between ugliness and total fucking creepiness. Like, you look like you're constantly about to rape someone. You look like a, a fucking zombie that came back to life to molest children. That's exactly what you're fucking nuts. Although Timmy's done a lot of good things for the county in his 30 years. Timmy, uh, Timmy's actually saved the county over $10,000 in 30 years. He's actually the only employee who's never used our free dental plan. <laughs> it's free, Timmy. It's free. He a lot of good at Pine Grove. He put together a super elite crew. Mr. Uh, Bill Mills is an engineer, and Mike Snowman doesn't get any better than that. They're actually known, they're actually known as the SEAL Team 2 of the East Side. <laughs> it would have been SEAL Team 6, but Snowman can't count that high. So. <laughs> Bill Mills, I was going to have Bill come up and say a few words, but we've only got three hours here. <laughs> you guys know there's not, but Bill Mills talks slow as Fuck. <laughs> Bill Mills talks like Mike Snowman thinks. <laughs> I'm not trying to say Snowman's dumb, but if the two bits, brother man, where the hell are Where? Uh, uh, Timmy, the time bomb. Timmy, the time bomb. I was always wondering how he got this nickname, so I started thinking about it. And I just, it's pretty much because he's a fucking spaz. It is a matter of time until he starts fucking something up. Putting Timmy in charge of a fire scene is like asking Jared Taylor to babysit. <laughs> Sooner or later, someone's getting fucked. Yes. But, uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. I'll get to my thing, but all joking aside.
inside for me. In all seriousness. <laughs> this brotherhood, you're about to leave. I know sometimes when you're on your own, you feel you can get lonely, you can get depressed. And I'm sure I speak for everyone in this room. If you get in that position, do not hesitate. Just eat a fucking bullet. Badass <laughs> <laughs> to our everybody. The assassin. Great job, man. Oh, that was great, man. That was great. We got a lot of firemen in this room, different departments, different shifts. Um, but there's there's something we all have in common. Like when we meet new people, they come up and, and the first thing they ask us, what's the grossest thing you've ever seen? What's the most traumatic experience you've been through in your career? And it sucks because it conjures up shit that we're trying to suppress and we drink a lot to cover it up and stuff like that. And the odd part, though, is this entire room, all the firemen in here will have the same exact answer. Timmy Neidert's Ice Bucket Challenge video on Facebook. <laughs> what the fuck were you thinking, dude? I, I can't even talk about it without, like, sweating and stammering and shit. That was horrible. It's Timmy, if you haven't seen it, you're lucky. He's, he's yeah, sitting... Get up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're fucked up, all right. Uh, <laughs> he's sitting in a, in a kiddie pool wearing, like yoga pants, and a cheerleader outfit. Why he still had that from middle school, I don't know. Um, he's, he's got a wig with pigtails, or his handlebars, as Jimmy the Fish calls them. Um, and he's got, he's got lipstick around his mouth, and he's stroking a doll that he's holding between his legs, like wedged in his camel toe. And we're like, what is this, dude? You're trying to raise money, man. Nobody could even finish the video. It's two minutes long. Nobody made it past the first minute. Um, he knew I wanted to bring it up today. Of course, we ha we couldn't overlook that one. And uh, I, I had him yesterday trying to send it to me, like a Facebook link. The link is broke, man. Facebook bans your video. <laughs> it, I thought that was fantastic, man. Only Timmy could pull something like that. Only, only you could ruin a fundraiser. Um, all righty, your next roaster. He's going to look pretty similar. He's a good guy. He's a district chief from over in uh, Brevard County. He's known Timmy the longest. Give it up for Mr. Tom Nider. <laughs> Where do I start? Well, everybody, welcome to the occasion. Welcome here. <laughs> this feels more like a eulogy than a retirement party. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, like I said, I'm Tom. I'm his twin brother. Uh, we started uh, from, we grew up in Homestead. And we moved up here to Joel's house when we were 18, 19, and we uh, became members of the Kissimmee Heights Volunteer Fire Department. Oh, yeah. yeah, known as Pigs Volunteers. <laughs> that wasn't funny, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm the guy that got a shit can from Osceola 24 years ago. <laughs> and it's true, a monkey could be a district chief. Uh, me and my brother had a great childhood, and we had great parents. We both kicked each other's ass. Uh, every other day, and it was fun to be honest. I was just really looking for a hug, man. Aww. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, we had many mentors in our career. Like I said, Kissimmee Heights is where it started. I want to thank everybody that's at Kissimmee Heights. Uh, we are who we are today because of Kissimmee Heights. So I know you guys don't think about volunteer fire departments, but back in the day, that's how we started our career. Uh, thanks for, for being part of Tim's career, everybody. Uh, he had a passion for helping people and getting shit done. Uh, there's only one problem with that. He's not mechanically inclined at all. The guy can't even fucking put in a screw. He called me at midnight one time trying to figure out fucking electrical cords. <laughs> oh, it gets better. The fucker joined the hazmat team. <laughs> I'm a lieutenant on the hazmat team for 20 years. So this fucking guy, are you kidding me? Yeah, nope. That guy, you're fucking gone before he even started. <laughs> Uh, so close to 10 years ago, he had a brush with uh, death. Uh, no one, uh, no, he wasn't rescuing a child from a burning hotel from four stories above. He fell fucking four stories from a fucking tree. <laughs> We're glad you survived the accident. Now that you're retired, you can go to the store and buy a fucking scooter and some damn venison from the store. <laughs> And since we're talking about scooters and Medicare, do something about your fucking teeth. <laughs> Tim, your teeth are so fucking yellow, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. He 
did you, did you tell her you got pulled over last week? You got a ticket for your fucking dental insurance. Hey, we love you, man. Good luck in the next chapter. Good luck. Thanks for being here. Here we go for Tommy, the better looking version of Timmy. <laughs> The rest of us would. <laughs> Conversely, Timmy is what Tommy would look like if he didn't have to worry about all the stress of Kelly Days and higher pay in <laughs> Sula County. So, <laughs> you were the first person in the history of genetics to have an identical twin that looks twice as good as you. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> Uh, I don't know why you're laughing, Tommy. It's not a, a, a compliment to be the good-looking Niter brother. Like, <laughs> no point. Uh, you guys look like when you shared a wound together, like Timmy was kicking your mom and you were kicking Timmy in the face. Like, that's, I imagine that's how that went. All right, let's keep it going now. Uh, we got... We got a guy who worked with uh, me and Timmy and a few others of us, a universal real good guy. Give it up for Naughty. He's Indian. I don't know his real name. That's his nickname, so we're just going to stick with that. Holy shit. You guys ever see those, uh, those websites where it's like, you know, a person right before meth and then like five months later? That's what I just saw between Tim and his brother. God damn it. That was crazy. So, and, and speaking of holy shit, um, I look around the room, and I'm like one of like five ethnics in here. I know, it, it, it's Osceola County, and I mean, I grew up in St. Cloud, but it's still kind of a little unnerving, I'm not gonna lie. So, so uh, friends, loved ones, and uh, bums who have paid them off, or he's paid off for favors. Uh, we're not here to mourn the loss. But we're here to celebrate it. I think Matt already said that. I, I wrote this like a week ago, and I wasn't expecting half the material to already be gone. <laughs> uh, Apparently, it was right on. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're not here to mourn the loss, but we are here to celebrate the riddance of Timmy Nider. They say you only roast the ones you love, but I usually work Sundays, and today was a great excuse for me to drink. <laughs> By the way, despite what you were told, um, this is not actually a roast. You're going to be getting five CEUs for uh, psychiatric emergency. <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to endure for one period. So. <clears throat> Timmy may not remember this specifically, but uh, we met maybe about 21 years or so, so I'm told. Uh, October 30th, 1997. I got into a real bad car wreck over on Canoe Creek and Old Canoe Creek Road. I was airlifted out. And uh, it wasn't until about 2002, a few years later, I was in EMT school and uh, met a few of the guys who uh, pulled me out of the car. And I heard, you know, later on that uh, Timmy might have been one of the people on scene. I don't know how true that is, and I actually haven't, haven't asked him about it. Uh, but. Uh, you know, while I was in EMT school in 2002, I couldn't figure out, I was trying to, I was learning about mechanism of injuries and car accidents, and I couldn't figure out how after a broadside, I had suffered, you know, separated shoulder, bruised knees, and mild anal trauma. And he was there. That's what I'm thinking, exactly. So, while on my clinicals, I met some of the crew, like I said, that pulled me out, and I remember seeing this skeleton that looked just like the guy who tried to hook me up with Natty Light back at the Gator Hole back in high school in like 95, which kind of coincides with the dark time in his life. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, years later, we were introduced to co-workers on his training day back at Universal. I think it was that, 2010, 2012, somewhere around there. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, the black cloud that Timmy is, we ran a code that day. I had never seen a medic so swiftly punch a dead guy in the chest and reach around and stick a finger in his ass before putting on an AED and starting compression. <laughs> Talk about passion in your work. <laughs> that was just amazing. So, you ain't right. <laughs> Some people might call Timmy horrible things like a racist or a bigot or 
an enthusiastic Trump supporter. <laughs> Moving forward, so let's all give him a round of applause for the work he's been doing bringing fire gear to Bimini. It's, it, it's a very touching cause, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure if it's generosity or preventative maintenance. You know, here's a bunch of used fire shit, now stay on your side. <laughs> all joking aside, though, Timmy does have his heart in the right place. Uh, I do a bit of charity work for the homeless out in downtown Orlando. And uh, Timmy, knowing that I do volunteer work, asked me a while back if uh, I could help out with, he does an event every year in Brevard County. It's a uh, zombie a zombie trail uh, to raise money for, what is it again? Brevard Sheriff's Association. The Brevard Sheriff's Association, yeah. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to help out. Of course, I've got to find the, uh, was it like you were drunk one night and ripping your clothes off and a bunch of people were sitting around filming it and going, huh, we can make money off of this. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's what I visualized. That whole thing came to fruition. <laughs> anyway, uh, you, you know, I'm available for any project we have in the future. Um, God bless you in everybody's lives and possibly Anderson's you may have touched. <laughs> Give it go, Vermonti, everybody. I don't know how I'm going to follow that. Vermonti is, is not his real name, it's a nickname. It's when you combine his two names, not and funny. Um, how do you, I, I'm sitting on the side and I'm looking at Timmy. And I'm thinking to myself, because I was going through his Facebook yesterday, and in pictures, like, he looks fairly normal. Like, I don't know if you ever noticed that, but, like, in, in person... You know, you're just this mess, this, <laughs> like, like one dimensional, great, three dimensional, not so much. Like that second and third dimension really fucked you up. <laughs> um, interesting fact about Timmy, he has almost many, uh, almost as many friends on Facebook as he does on Grindr. So, <laughs> speaking of, speaking of Grindr, our next roaster's coming up. <laughs> uh, please give a warm round of applause for Mr. Brett Ford. Yeah. about that. Yeah, thanks. Looking good, Matt. If only your hair had that kind of bounce. Uh, I apologize to everybody sitting in Timmy's splash zone. Hope you brought a tarp. In case it gets hungry up here, you're going to get covered in food and whatnot. Uh, Timmy has manners like Matt McNabb eats pussy. He doesn't. <laughs> Good to see a lot of sea shifters out here. I'll try to make this fast so you guys can get home to your probation officers. For all the A shifters, I'll talk slow. When I heard Timmy was retiring, I was disappointed. I mean, more disappointed than McNabb's wife getting a fake chow on her birthday. <laughs> I looked up to Timmy when I got hired. He was a mentor. Then I got to know him. <laughs> Timmy was my inspiration to actually become a lieutenant. Figured this retard could do it, what the hell. <laughs> Just keep it going. But now you're retired. Congratulations, you made it. Following in the footsteps of all the great lieutenants that have moved on the bigger, brighter things. Brendan Daring, Gary Sargent, Jared Taylor. <laughs> People always ask what you're going to do when you grow up. Now it's turned into more like what are you going to be when you retire? A dispatcher, bus driver, sandwich artist, inmate number 229. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if you ended up in jail. That ice bucket challenge video was horrible. <laughs> Did anybody ever read the comments from the video on YouTube? The only one on there was from Schultz. <laughs> Said not bad, 8 out of 10, couldn't see his, couldn't see his feet, still came. <laughs> but all serious aside, you made it to the end. You're retired, you're still alive, you're healthy. 
You don't look it, but you're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> There's numerous stories. They go on and on. We don't have all day. <laughs> so congratulations and good luck to you. Brett Ford, everybody. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> Nadi alluded earlier to, uh, to Timmy doing fundraising things, and uh, he's done a lot over the years. Uh, a few years ago, though, he had a great idea. He's like, Matt, I have a great idea for a fundraiser. Uh, I was like, what are you thinking, like, car wash, bake sale? No, I want to do a firefighter calendar, Matt. I'm like, <laughs> That's a good idea, Timmy. Normally it comes from women, but I don't want to judge. HR, good idea. Whatever. Um, so Timmy makes these calendars, and he sets it out. He orders like 100 of them, and he sells three to like some nurses in the hospital, and they're like, oh, look at these hot firemen with no shirts. And, uh. and then they realize you can't use the fucking calendar. It's got 28 days every month. <laughs> How do you fuck up a calendar, dude? Only Timmy! Oh. Do not put him in charge of stuff, please! Chief D. Abbey, please don't let him do this Bimini thing, man. Find someone else. Jesus. Oh. Terrible, man. Terrible. Dude, you were at Station 52. You were one of the original 52. And your calendar has 46 weeks. How do you do that, man? <laughs> Timmy. So he gets, he gets rid of three calendars, and he's got 97 of them left. And we're like, oh, he threw them in the trash, he recycled them. No, no. He decorated his man cave in, in these calendars, dude. I go around, I'm like, looking at it, and I'm like, this is a great culmination of your two greatest passions, and that's raising funds and having pictures of shirtless firemen around you. That's great, man. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see who's up next year. <laughs> Alrighty. Your next roaster. Uh, I don't know if he's going to roast or not, but he's funny as shit and everybody loves him. So give it up for Ratso. Well, when they asked me to be a roaster, hell, I thought I was cooking. I got my damn <laughs> cooker out there. I'm sure he was at Jimmy Bear's. I'm going to put them out of business. Y'all ever heard the term sharp as a meatball? That's it. That's where that comes from. Sharp as a meatball. Old time bomb. Half of them people that named you time bomb don't know your brother, do you? It makes Timmy look calm. Now listen, I'm not going to roast Timmy as much as I'm just going to tell some old redneck stories on him. Some of the things that, uh, that he's told me over the years. I didn't actually see some of these things, but... I'm a real good bullshitter, so I'm going to put it my spin on it, okay? <laughs> the first thing is the hunting story, the one that he didn't fall out of the tree stand, okay? <laughs> Timmy's going to go up to George and kill him a doe for some meat. <laughs> well, he goes up there, and the little nanny doe comes by, and he shoots her, and he gets excited, and he jumps down the, the tree and leans his gun up against the tree and runs to get the deer. Only by the hunts knows you don't leave your damn gun by the tree. Sharp as a meatball. Okay. There we go. Sharp as a meatball. So he gets to the dough. He gets his knife out, and he's going to, you know, go ahead and start dress, field dressing her. And she squirms a little bit. Well, he jumps on her. Well, she kicks the knife out of his hand. Well, he slides over against the knife and cuts her throat because she ain't dead yet. Well, he thinks, oh, man, it's good. Thank God. He gets up. She jumps up, starts running towards the creek. He drops his knife, and he's running. He, he finally gets her down right at the creek. Sits on her, she's bellering and every other kind of thing. He trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do? Well, I'll drown her. Okay, I'll drown her. He ain't got a gun. He ain't got a knife. I'll drown her. So he puts her face in the water. Well, he don't realize he cut her throat. She's breathing out of her throat hole. So he's waiting on him to drink. And she, you know, she, she. So what does every good woodsman do? You'd be good on naked. Well, not naked and afraid. How about that? Covered up and afraid. Uh, but what's he do? He takes a big old rock and bashes her head in. Ain't that, that's the way you kill a deer, isn't it? I thought that was great. Yeah, he's a thinker. He's a thinker. Calls me up one day. He says, uh, 
Brad's old man, you, you, you've hunt, hunted hogs, ain't you? And I said, yeah, I've hunted hogs. He said, man, I got a, this is when he lived in Bay Lake. And uh, he says, uh, man, I got a hog coming in there every night. I, I've been wanting to trap it. Uh, you got a trap? I said, no. I said, but Timmy, you can build a trap pretty easy. So just get you some chain link fence, build it around there, get your door that swings in. You put a little string on it, you know, where they root it up and it falls down. Oh, okay. Yeah, how big? I told him how big. So about a week goes by, I didn't hear from him. I called him up. I said, hey, man, did you get that hog? He said, nah. He got out. I said, he got out? How the hell did he get out of the chain link fence? Well, I couldn't get no chain link fence, so I used some pine saplings. Well, pine, you might as well build out a rubber band. I mean, pine saplings are like this, so the hog just ran through. I said, Timmy, you got to get some chain link fence. He said, yeah, yeah, I will, I will. A week goes by, I call him up. I said, well, did you finally catch him? No, he climbed out. <laughs> climbed out? How, how tall was the chain link fence? Well, I couldn't find any chain link fence, so I dug me a tiger pit. You covered it up with all that. I said, you did what? How deep you got you got to dig it for a hog not to climb out? I said, Timmy, man, just get you some chain link fence. It won't take you no time. Oh, about a week later, Sam, it's closed. Go on out. Everybody's already laughed done all the shit that's funny. No. But uh, so a week later, he calls me up. He's all excited. Hey, I got that hog. I said, you got the hog? He said, yeah, sir. So you got the chain link fence? Well, no. Um, I ended up uh, sitting in a tree last night. Uh, I put some corn out. It was, it was, it was a, a moonlit night, so I, I shot him. I said, oh, okay. He goes, well, uh, the neighbors called the cops. I said, what? <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's 2 o'clock in the morning. He shot it with a shotgun. The neighbors called the cops. They got around there with a bullhorn telling him to come out with his hands up. <laughs> he had to take the car back there and show him that the hog was dead. Yeah, yeah, it is. Great taxidermy work, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I know that guy. Yeah, the guy was great. I don't care what S. Bar said, he looks good naked, too. <laughs> <laughs> Through these eyes, anyway. Oh, man. No, I, uh, I am going to miss you. That's really about all the jokes I got that I can think of, or all the stories that I got. Um, we were just talking about uh, tonight, or this afternoon, we were just talking about how time flies. So, uh, all you guys that just started or just come to one of these things, enjoy it. And uh, it's, a, it's the greatest job in the world. And uh, there ain't very many lines of work that you have to live with somebody for, you know, 24 out of every uh, three days. So enjoy it. And uh, we're going to miss you, buddy. Fuck <laughs> pussy. Brad's offending to everybody. Give it up. That was great. I can't even crack on him. It's like tradition when he's on his way back to his seat, I'm supposed to crack on the roaster or something like that. But we all know how Ratso takes a joke, so we're not going to do that. I'm not going to say something like, it's a joke, not a deer's dick. Don't take it so hard. Like, <laughs> nothing like that. I'll, I'll leave him alone. <laughs> and in firehouses, as you know, we, we're, we're also known for pulling a lot of pranks on people. Um, we've had a lot of pranks, probably thousands in our department's history, but the most notorious prank in our history was played on Timmy by a student. <laughs> a student who shows up and he's scared because he's a student, pulled a prank on Timmy. Mike Pappas, who now works for us, is he here? No. Uh, we'd know if he was here, he's a big dude. Um, <laughs> he's why the lieutenant shirts went from white to gray, because he got sick of being called the Michelin Man. Um, <laughs> Mike Pappas breaks into the shower. Timmy's in there taking a shower. I know, Timmy took a shower. Um, and he sets off a CO2 extinguisher, smoking up the room and all this, just trying to scare him, having some fun. Uh, what he didn't realize is that you can't breathe in that, and Timmy went unconscious and fell over, hitting his head. Uh, Mike panicked, everybody in the station panicked. Uh, they run in there, they check on him. And there's his naked body under the shower. He's got a lump on his head, bleeding, a blown pupil, and I, I, I'm assuming it's a priapism. Uh, I'm hoping. <laughs> and they're like, what do we do? And it turns out they did nothing. They, they're like, he is so ugly and he's naked, we're going to leave him here. Timmy, congratulations on being the one and only trauma alert we've ever had that got a refusal taken on that. 
It's not the only time he's been naked in a fire station. I was talking to some dispatchers about you as mid six. <laughs> Running around naked outside the admin because he got locked out. I don't know. <laughs> only Timmy. Only Timmy. All righty, your next roaster. He looks like he should be a cop. Engineer of 52, Jason Post. Get up. Oh, this is stressful. Everyone had notes. I don't have any notes. Ratso, I was just looking at telling stories. You fucked me on that. Thank you. Thanks for coming in at the end and taking my fucking stories. So I'm going to start just with like how fucking stupid Timmy is. We, we spent a lot of time together fucking doing everything. Going to the woods, going hunting, building swamp buggies, everything. So we're building a swamp buggy. This bitch is like four or 5,000 pounds. We're getting ready to take it to the woods, and Timmy calls me, and he's like, hey, dude, I fucked up your uh, ramps to load the four-wheelers. And I was like, how the fuck did you fuck up my ramps for the four-wheeler? And he's like, I was trying to pull the swamp buggy onto the trailer, and they folded. And I was like, wait, my fucking 600-pound max capacity four-wheeler ramp, you decided to pull a 5,000 fucking pound swamp buggy. That's Timmy. Dumb as fuck. <laughs> it's totally true. Every one of these are just my stories with Timmy. That's all I got. And they're all fucking stupid. He used to go hunting with this bitch, and he is so fucking stupid. He, the very first day we get out there, we're all excited. We drive all the way to fucking Georgia, and he hands me this walkie-talkie. As I'm, I'm leaving, he's like, oh, take a fucking walkie-talkie. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll take a walkie-talkie. I'm thinking... If something occurs, I gotta call him on the walkie-talkie. Now this bitch wants to talk to me the whole fucking time. I get into my stand and he's beep beep. Hey, what are you doing? I'm like beep beep. I'm fucking sitting in my stand. Beep beep. You see anything? Beep beep. Bitch, you know this thing fucking beeps every time you fucking call me. Stop fucking calling me, Timmy. So a little while goes by and I get. <laughs> I get. <laughs> so stupid. I get, I get, beep, beep, help me, please come, beep, beep, what the fuck's going on, beep, beep, oh, I'm like, so I'm in a fucking climber, I'm like, oh, fuck, trying to do the climber, get down, I get down, I'm fucking running across the field, up the hill, all the way over to where fucking Timmy is, He's laying there with blood all over the fucking place, on the ground, in front of a shooting house. He's in a fucking regular shooting house. He's laying with blood. I'm like, what the fuck? And as soon as I got close enough, I realized he fucking scopied himself and knocked himself completely out. Anyone doesn't know what scopi is, it's when you close in and you get the scope too close to your face and then he went, and this bitch was out. So this is the first fucking day I knew Ratso's story, and I still chose to go hunting with this bitch. The first day, this is what he does. Second day, fucking second day. He had just been defibrillated, treated, transported, whatever. He had fucking AFib, SVT, or something before we went out. Because Timmy has a fucking Mountain Dew problem. <laughs> If anyone couldn't tell from his fucking teeth, Timmy has a fucking Mountain Dew problem. So, <laughs> he, he fucking, uh, I can't, where am I at? What story? Oh, oh, wait, the second day. So the second day, I get up into my tree stand, and I'm fucking sitting there, and I'm like this, I don't really give a shit about shooting anything. I love nature. Timmy's all about fucking killing everything. He's like, I'm gonna go over this bridge, I'm gonna go over a log, I'm gonna go down fucking three miles, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, bro, you shoot that deer fucking a mile and a half away, when you cross two creeks, you're gonna have to drag that bitch back. No, bro, I'll call you. I'm like, he's not calling me. After the first day, I turned all my shit off. <laughs> so, yes, dusk, dusk is setting, I fucking come down, I haven't shot anything, and I'm all excited. I'm like, ah, turn my phone back on. Fucking like 30 texts from Timmy. Please help. Oh my God. It's so fucking heavy. Everything. I get. <laughs> he shot that deer. He didn't even get.
get to his fucking tree stand. He started it up, shot the deer, and then spent the next two hours dragging that bitch back with 550 cord. When I finally get up to where I meet him at the four-wheeler, fucking insane Timmy, this is, this is the last time I go hunting with him. It's down the bank. He's got it up over a tree branch, tied back to the four-wheeler, and he looks like death. Death. He is fucking great. There's no black people. He looks like black people when they're about to die. Great. He's dying. He's backing the fucking four-wheeler up, and he's looking at me like he's going to die. And I was like, Timmy, stop. I'm going to lean over the edge and take the rack, because the rack's grabbing all the roots as he's trying to pull it up this bank. I'm like, I'm going to reach over and pull it, but be fucking easy. He's like, oh, I got you, bro. I got you. So I'm leaning over, and I pull the rack, and I'm like, okay, easy, easy. He goes, root, and takes off, <laughs> breaks the fucking tree branch, knocks me out. I, I wake up like 10 minutes later, I'm like, fucking, I'm done. I'm done. I want to go home. So, 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 he also, you've never seen his scars. This bitch is full of scars. On the way, on the way home, he goes, he, he goes, we're on some fucking interstate. He's like, I got shit. Woo! And he got fucking hit ditches and everything. And in Georgia, there's these really fancy fucking houses just off the road, and they got this little tree line that's separating them. Timmy is running, taking off his shirt, dropping his pants, and he's running into the tree line. I'm like, what the fuck? This is like happening in three seconds. He runs into the woods. This bitch is totally naked. A family of rich Georgia motherfuckers are playing cricket in their yard, and Timmy's bare naked shitting behind one tree. <laughs> Take a picture. I was like, fucking bald Bigfoot shitting in these people's heart. I, to be honest, I loved the shirt he had. It was a nice fucking Salt Life shirt. He comes back, no shirt. I'm walking over with his pants on. I'm like, bro, where's the shirt? He's like, I had to wipe my ass. We could have washed the shirt. I like the shirt. It was a good shirt. Uh, so. That's our hunt. We're done with the hunt, and we'll go to just fucking regular. A lot of people don't know. I've been friends with Timmy more, been friends with Tommy. We've done a lot of shit together. Little shit that people don't know is there was actually three, if you can fucking believe it. There were triplets when these bitches were born. All of them were born in various stages of fucked up. So when the doc looked in, he looked, and he was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. We can fucking flush all these bitches down the toilet. Or we can try to part one out and see if we can make shit out of the others. So, 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 they fucking part one of them out. Tommy, raise your thumbs. Tommy got the brother's actual thumbs. Timmy, raise your thumbs. Timmy got fucking big toes. No, hold them up there, bitch. Those are big toes. So, <laughs> you're, thinking, you're thinking, how fucked up was that third brother that they chose to keep these two fucks? <laughs> so they went on, they, you know, the rest of them, they got his penis toes for, or they got his toes Picky toes for penises, which ended up working out for all of society because these two bitches have never appropriated. <laughs> they don't have kids, which brings me to something totally off the wall is someone in a government fucking foundation decided to let this fucking train wreck adopt a child. <laughs> God's looking down. He's like, I fixed this shit. Those two are never gonna fucking have kids. I took their dicks. They got pinky toes as dicks. And then this bitch sitting behind a desk is like, nah, give him a kid. Give him a kid. What the fuck? All right, that's, that's all I got. I have a lot more stories about it. Thanks for coming, everybody. That was fantastic, bro. Oh, that was fantastic. Did you guys have some fun today? Did you have a good time? All right. In my opinion, at least, I saved the best for last myself. 
Yes. It's on. It's time to get rude, crude, and make you guys. Simpsons and a crackhead had a baby. <laughs> you would probably touch it inappropriately. Um, a picture of Timmy counts as a suicide note. I just found that out. <laughs> CC works CSI. She's like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, your teeth. I don't even know where to start. You're, you held this event here because it's close to where you get your lunch at Tractor Supply. <laughs> they sell horse feet. Um, when you bite an apple, it looks like three people bit. How is that? How does that happen? Epileptic people have better teeth than you. British people make fun of your teeth. Patty Starr makes fun of your teeth. <laughs> The county actually forced him to retire because he was uninsurable, which usually means like you have a bad driving record, too many points. They're talking about Cigna Dental. They're, they will not pick you up ever again, man. They're like, go, get the fuck out. <laughs> your dentist calls you George Foreman, if you had a dentist, because your grill is impossible to clean. <laughs> I'm looking at the pictures and I realize you got one white tooth surrounded by all them black ones. It looks like, like it's a basketball coach with a basketball team in his mouth. And that's probably not the first time that's been said. Um, your teeth don't have plaque, they have the plague. It's not just the teeth, it's his gums. You have more gums showing than an overturned high school desk. An entire page of teeth jokes. He's so ugly, it's gotten him out of jury duty. That's actually happened. Like, he went in there, and the judge is looking at it. It's him and this African dude, and he's like, what's your name? He's like, come on to me. And your name, sir? And he's going with click, click, nine times out of ten, man. You, you look like you were left in the back seat of a hot car as a kid, like, almost too long. Like... Or not long enough, depending on how you look at it. You look like if the Holocaust was a person. That's you. That hurt to say I'm not even Jewish. I realize I need help. Uh, you look like you don't do drugs, but your unsuspecting victims do. You're creepy, man. You're creepy as fuck. Is that how he got you? Is that... You can report... Date rape is a crime. Especially like 18 years long. Um, he always, he's always got that goofy look that you just had. You had it, but you always look like you just shit your pants. <laughs> like, like a little kid that shits his pants and he's happy about it and stuff. That's what Timmy's always looked like to me. You, you look like you scored a 68 on an AIDS test. <laughs> uh, Timmy is so ugly. When he was a kid, he went missing. And that's when they decided to stop putting kids' pictures on milk cartons. That's all these true stories. There's... You look like you enjoy prostate exams. Is, that, is it just me? Am I the only one that sees that? Like, like he goes into the airport like through TSA, and they're like, do you have an alias? And he's like, time bomb! Because he knows if you say bomb in an airport, someone's going to shove something up their ass. Like, that's, that's what I see when I look at Timmy. Timmy looks like he can name all three Golden Girls. <laughs> there you go. And there's four. You're what Mike Flynn should look like. <laughs> this guy got electrocuted. <laughs> you look like you believe the earth is flat. You're like, like one of those... Not like a, a hipster, like nowadays people are saying flat earth. No, you look like Neanderthal, like, like Cro-Magnon, like that's the extent of where you're at. You, that's what you look like, sorry. <laughs> you got a big fucking head, dude. Um, <laughs> you're hiding it well with that hat. Um, it, it looks like your brain stores memories of failure, like how a camel stores water. <laughs> um, Timmy's more spastic than Mark Shulman in a bank lobby. <laughs> Your head looks like a retarded broccoli. You look like each year you're alive should count as seven. Like a dog. Dog years, Timmy years, same thing. 
You look like there should be a, you should be a public service announcement for why people shouldn't do drugs when they're pregnant. Like <laughs> meth or acid, something like that. Um, and according to your crew, uh, along the same lines, um, working with Pimmy is like an abortion and that it sucks the life out of you. <laughs> Timmy, this has been a lot of fun. It's been great working with you. I've learned a lot from you, mainly what not to do. Um, you're a good sport, man. Uh, how you, you have the self-esteem to think that you should do this, like, I don't know, you're, you're a better man than I am. You, you really are a good dude. Um, I know we shit on you a lot, but I know it's been a lot of fun, man. Not just tonight, but your career. So thank you very much, man. All right. The floor is yours, Timmy. Fire back. You're a great writer, bro. You're a really great writer. You, uh, you, did you write for the Oprah Network? Oh, wait, in case you're wondering where your punchlines are, check it underneath your seats. Check it underneath your seats. Crickets, bitch. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> Jason, sorry your wife couldn't make it clearly because you never made her come either. <laughs> I'd like to thank Joel. He's my uh, <clears throat> uncle, kind of like an older brother for me. Tommy, you're not my older brother. You're more like an alter ego, like Batman, except with no money, no girls, no businesses. More like a preacher, like Jimmy Swagger, stealing all your money. <laughs> when we were born, Tommy, you came out five minutes early because he still does that when he comes in a woman. <laughs> Tommy, you're like a hemorrhoid. You're shitty and I can't get rid of you. If you had hemorrhoid surgery, no matter what happens tonight, your ass is still getting creamed. Oh. Oh. oh, God. I know. I'd... You're the type of guy that would say fudge instead of fuck, and you would rather eat fudge than fuck. <laughs> Look at that belly. You put burgers and ass burgers. <laughs> I remember when you first met Anod. Uh, that's when Geppetto turned you into a real boy. <laughs> oh, God. What is it, Mike? You look like Rota Soto with lupus. <laughs> What's up? You? Right. I'm glad you dressed up. I'm glad you dressed up tonight. You look really good. You tied up your belt just like David Carradine did. <laughs> You've convinced more women to have abortions than prenatal tests for STDs. You know they make uh, one percent milk now. We all know Mike is nuts, but uh, he's tasted them. No. Uh, God. When alcohol does it, you taxes in April. When alcohol does its taxes in April, then she was a dependent. No, You've been inside more farm animals than Purina. I guess this is my last one. I'll make this for Matt. Your smile's so cute. Your teeth are like the Spice Girls. They're all different colors and they do their own little thing. <laughs> That's it, I'm done. I'd like to thank everybody who came. Joel for making this happen. Um, who else? Your wife. Uh, my wife, busting her ass, and family and friends, and uh, CC and Rob Woody for doing their thing, and everybody else for showing up. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna grow. <laughs> Thanks, it was fun. <laughs> Next. Oh, yeah, if everybody wants to stay, we got cake too. We got cake too. What are you gonna have, some cake and cock? Cake and cock. <laughs> That's it, buddy. Appreciate it.